sort of a financial deal should Obama be seeking to strike when he travels to China next month? No, I think this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, um, uh, world order, financial world order. Uh, they are kind of reluctant members of the IMF. They play along, but they don't make much of a contribution because it's not their, uh, uh, not their institution. Their share is, is not commensurate. Their voting rights are not commensurate to their weight. So I think you need a, a new world order that China has to be part of the process of creating it, and they have to buy in, they have to own it, the same way as, let's say, the United States owns the Washington consensus, the current order. And, and I think this would be a more stable one where, where uh, uh, you would have a coordinated uh, policies. I think the makings of it are already there because the G20, in agreeing to peer reviews, effectively is moving in that direction. Given this continued weakness in the U.S. economy, are people right to start to be concerned about the dollar? Well, as they are, of course, uh, uh, and the dollar is a very weak currency except, except for all the others. Uh, so there is a general sort of lack of confidence in, in currencies and a move away from currencies into real assets. The, the, the Chinese are continuing uh, to run a, a big uh, trade surplus and they're still accumulating assets and uh, basically the renminbi is uh, permanently undervalued because it's tied to the dollar. Um, and um, uh, there, there is a diversification uh, from assets that normally held by central banks into other assets, especially uh, in the area of, of uh, uh, commodities. So there is a, a push uh, in, in gold, there's a strength in, 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 in oil, uh, and that is in a way a flight from currencies. Is there going to be sort of a tipping point, a moment at which the dollar is fatally weakened, or does it just sort of carry on? Well, it's, it's difficult. As long as, you, as, as, as long as the renminbi is tied to the dollar, uh, I don't see how the, de how the decline in the dollar uh, can go too far. Now, of course, to, to some extent, it's very helpful because with the U.S. consumers saving more and spending less, exports can be a way for the U.S. economy to be balanced. So a, 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 an orderly decline of the dollar is actually a, a desirable. Does it at some point need also to decline against the renminbi? Does there need to be some sort of a new global currency deal? Yes. No, I, I, I believe that basically the, 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 the system is broke and needs to be reconstituted. We cannot afford to have the, the kind of uh, chronic and mounting imbalances in, in uh, international uh, uh, finance. Uh, so you need a new uh, currency system and actually uh, the special drawing rights uh, do give you the makings of, of a system. And I think it's, it's ill-considered uh, on the part of the United States to, to resist the uh, wider use of, uh, of special drawing rights. They could be very, very useful now uh, when you have a global shortfall of demand. You could actually create, internationally create uh, a currency uh, through a special drawing rights. And this is, the, uh, we've done it, we issued $250 billion. Uh, and that's a very, very uh, useful step, except the, the um, uh, rich countries uh, don't actually need the additional reserves. Uh, 
So they, all they can do is put it in the shop window and say we have got that, that much extra, but they can't actually use it. Now, I think they, it could be used. It could be used to provide global public goods. Uh, the, the rich countries could uh, put their allocations in escrow. The problem is that there is a cost to using SDRs. Uh, it's a very small cost at the moment. It's only less than half a percent, but still is a cost. So somebody has to pay it. And I think we have actually the means to do it because the IMF has very large gold reserves and the, uh, kept in the books at a very low price. And it has been decided to use th that, uh, those gold reserves to the benefit of the least developed countries. So th they, the IMF could actually pick up the cost of paying for the special drawing rights. Using its gold reserves. And, and, and in fact, it's being done. It's no, it hasn't been, it hasn't gotten any publicity. But I understand that uh, in Istanbul, a deal was signed uh, where I think the, uh, the UK and France uh, uh, actually transferred uh, $2 billion of their SDRs, or $2 billion worth, or $2 billion SDR worth, or to, to um, uh, uh, the, the least developed countries. And the IMF picks up the cost. So it's a, it's a road that's already been used, and it could be used on a larger scale. And what about the American concern that aiding and embedding this move away from the dollar as the world's reserve currency ultimately means a weakening of the U.S. economy? It is not necessarily in our interest uh, to have the dollar as the sole uh, uh, world currency. Uh, because the, as the world economy grows, it needs additional currency. And if the dollar is that additional currency, it means that the U.S. has to have a chronic uh, uh, current account deficit. And that is not appropriate. So I think it's, it's, it's in our interest as well uh, to, uh, to reform the system. I think this is a, a, a healthy, if painful, adjustment that the world has to go through. If America doesn't actively take part in this sort of renegotiation of global finance, what will happen? What's your nightmare scenario? Well, uh, uh, the, uh, the Chinese will go bilateral. They already do it. They already have a clearing uh, arrangement with Argentina, and I think they're working on one with Brazil, and you will find that uh, there will be more and more bilateral uh, arrangements. So the, the, uh, the dollar will remain the main international currency, but its use will decline. So uh, uh, I think that a, a world of bilateral relations is less desirable than a, a, a continuation of a multilateral system. But the, the, the system we have now has actually broken down, only we haven't uh, quite recognized it. And so you need to create a new one. And this is the time uh, to do it. In the United States, how worried are you about the budget deficit and maybe about the possibility of inflation? Well, uh, um, certainly uh, a decline in the value of the dollar is necessary in order to uh, compensate for the fact that the U.S. economy will remain rather weak, will be a drag on the global economy. Uh, uh, China will emerge as the motor replacing the U.S. consumer. And, of course, it's a smaller motor because the Chinese economy is much smaller. So the world economy will have less of a motor. So it will move forward slower than it has in the last uh, 25 years. But China will be the, the, the engine driving it forward, and the U.S. will be actually 
a, a drag that's being pulled along through a gradual decline in the value of the dollar. So there would be a slow uh, um, decline in the value of the dollar, a, a managed uh, decline. And that would be the, the adjustment that it needs to be accomplished. Now, it could actually get out of hand. And certainly, the fear of inflation will precede inflation itself.